We have over here is a self-driving car and it runs uh, using the uh, LEGO NXT 2.0 Mindstorm software. So we have the hardware which we assembled as well as the software, the programming that we've had to do. And um, there are a couple of reasons why we thought of doing something like this. Because um, it is very possible that in the future autopilot uh, could come to uh, cars as well. So there could be uh, uh, road tracks instead of traffic lights with colored stripes on the road which would direct the car on exactly where to make turns, where to stop, uh, how to greet people and uh, what not. So um, let's see exactly how each part works. The color sensor over here detects the green colored paper over there and it uh, stops the motor for a while until it greets the human, hello have a nice day. Also it is used to indicate to the that it has arrived at a particular destination or building it is supposed to be there. Here is our Mindstone's uh, programming uh, area and basically it's a huge program, it's very complicated as you can see. We can't uh, display it on one uh, area of the screen. And uh, how exactly it works is that uh, we run on an infinite forever loop and uh, in terms of the ultrasound sensor over here we have a gate, we have a switch which detects if the ultrasound sensor uh, detects a, uh, an obstacle approximately 5 inches or less and if so what it does is it pauses mot motor CNB for a duration of 5 seconds following which it checks again to see if the obstacle is still there now what it does if there is an obstacle still is that it takes an 180 degree turn but uh, how it does it is actually physics together with IT. One motor runs on unlimited power backwards and while that motor runs backwards the other motor runs forward for two seconds. So while the mo two motors run in two opposite directions with the motor going front with more power it successfully makes a 180 degree turn and continuously the ultrasound scanner would uh, keep checking on uh, if this keeps happening. Let's uh, exactly uh, see how it works over there. This here uh, would be an obstacle, for example, a construction site, and our two ultrasound scanners are on two sides. These two are the ultrasound scanners here. So it basically emits a, a wave, and if it, if it gets its reflection, it automatically calculates the distance. So if the object is within a 5 inch range, what it does is this. and waits for 5 seconds and checks again yes the object has not but now to prove the other concept of the program let's see what happens if it meets an obstacle waits for 5 seconds and following 5 seconds the obstacle is no longer there or is moved it should practically keep going on without turning So it is approaching the object, let's see what happens. Okay. Alright, it's paused, I'm gonna take it. It should continue to go. Ah, oh, there it goes. Exactly. The red strip over here is used as an indicator for the vehicle to turn. When the color sensor one detects a red strip, it signals one specific motor to increase its power simply dodging the vehicle to one side by doing this the sensor which detects a black line is more likely to detect this line rather than this line therefore it turns the vehicle towards this line and continues moving what we are doing right now is called calibrating the light sensor now as you see this program um, measures how much of light in intensity is available now when we move on to the black side it decreases to around 19, sometimes 9, and as you move on to the white, you will see that it increases to nearly 35. Now, this is the basic uh, concept of exactly how this program is line following. Let's see what happens in the programming side. Okay. Now, you guys might have been wondering exactly how we do this line following thing, which is the core foundation of the entire uh, uh, self driving car. It's actually pretty simple if you know exactly what to do and if you know your stuff right. 
Over here we have something called uh, the um, light sensor. Now the color sensor is used as a light sensor and we've uh, added the value that we calibrated it, we've added uh, 10 here which means if it detects um, um, a brightness which is less than 10 motor B will run on full power and motor C will be on very weak power now you can see the power difference from the color of this over here and if it does detect something brighter than that which is the white background this segment happens and that is where motor B that's the uh, left wheel has hardly any power and motor C, the right wheel, uh, wheel, has quite a lot of power. So what it does is it goes through a series of, you know, um, dodging here and there. The moment it sees black, it turns towards one direction and the moment it sees white, it turns to the other direction. So it continuously keeps seeing black and white, black and white. And it keeps adjusting its path along the line. So it's a pretty interesting concept. Um, and exactly what keeps it going is this entire block is a part of something called a forever loop you might see many loops that we have used so what basically happens is that the program continuously keeps looking for the light in intensity and exactly how the uh, turn is made if it sees red is this is another gate now this gate detects if a uh, red color is seen on the other color sensor so if it does see red color here we see exactly motor B and C being given um, uh, a dodging of fu uh, nearly full 90 motor power for one second uh, in uh, the steering direction of left so basically it dodges itself in the uh, direction uh, which it needs to turn uh, as Devin explained earlier Being a self-driving car is twofold firstly the hardware of it is have, have to be made using scratch like all the small small parts have to be fixed together secondly all the sensors are supposed to be unblocked by any other parts of the NXT block and also you have to make sure that none of the parts interfere with the cables which are being fixed to the block. For example, when we were using it, when we designed the structure of it, we, to uh, give it a compact look, we took the sensors, the two light sensors, and fixed it closer to this part over here. Because of that, we realized that we couldn't fix the USB port. So again, we had to take it to the front like this. So we are able to fix the USB and program it properly. Another important thing to do with the hardware is, uh, uh, one, we have a little thing called a swivel caster here. Now this ensures that the vehicle moves more smoothly because this can keep rotating and uh, turning as well. But um, there were a lot of problems uh, when we started fixing it at the first. Because, uh, for instance, we used a different uh, methodology to fix it uh, because uh, we built the hardware ourselves and it kept on moving this way so that uh, the motors, now these are the motors, touch the ground, uh, increasing the friction in the vehicle. And another important thing is to make sure that you have enough stability in the vehicle for it to keep moving at great speeds. Um, this is important uh, when building the NXT because if not, what will happen is so much of tension in the vehicle would uh, make all the small parts come out and the lifespan of your uh, self-driving car would be reduced. As I mentioned before, making a self-driving car the second part of it is basically programming, which is more like a trial and error method. The programming is mainly a consistent of IT, physics, maths, common sense, logic and what not, what more. The logic that what we understand is not always what the NXT block understands. Therefore, after building every part in the program, we need to test it before we continue to the NXT. If I got to ride on a car like this, so cute, isn't it? Okay, never mind, that's typical me. Anyway, you guys might be thinking that this is actually something made just for fun. But it actually has a lot of potential for real usage in the future. Because, one, this is electri electrically powered. This would help uh, reduce uh, fossil fuel usage in the future. And another thing is, it would cut uh, down on travel time and you know cost of transportation. Because you can actually be doing something more productive at work or home and send your car by itself to maybe uh, pick up groceries for instance because you can follow the line and in the future if uh, traffic lights are replaced by little colored strips like uh, the stuff on the track here which is very possible again um, the car will be able to easily follow directions and uh, arrive at the destination you can pause the required um, say hello and leave the uh, butcher for example and collect your meat come back home and we in fact have a second segment to our program which is uh, 
Bluetooth control. Now this allows the driver, uh, the, not the driver, actually the owner of the car, if he gets adventurous, to actually take a first hand view of where the car is right now using a camera placed in the front of the vehicle and control uh, his vehicle from home through the internet using another mobile phone. So this actually has a lot of potential to be used uh, as a replacement for modern vehicles um, in the future. And this is uh, the proof, uh, this is proven by the fact that aeroplanes already have something called autopilot. So why not come? Thank you for watching our video. And we hope that we help inspire other youth of today to uh, try out interesting programs like this. My name is David. And I'm Navidu. Um, and uh, we'd like to end by quoting what our uh, little uh, fellow there, our self-driving car, likes to say all the time. What's it, David? Hello. Hello. Have, Have a nice day. day.